coach, first of all, uh, welcome in uh, Greece, uh, welcome in EuroLeague basketball. Uh, looking at your bio uh, in coaching, it's not easy to choose if you are, you know, a Serbian coach with an American basketball culture or an American basketball product with a Serbian mind. I don't really mind, I don't care, you know. You just, How do you uh, feel? I mean, I'm Serbian, born and raised in Serbia. Uh, grew up as a Yugoslavian slash Serbian uh, coach, learning a lot from the from the great basketball yeah. minds and, uh, and the basketball coaches uh, that had a huge impact on me growing up and, and developing as a coach. And, you know, I can't I can ignore the fact that 20 years I've been in the NBA and uh, living far away from Serbia. So trying to uh, take kind of advantage and the best from the both basketball schools. And uh, at the end of the day, you have to be yourself. Usually, let's say coaches who worked a long time in the NBA or in EuroLeague uh, rarely decide to take the opposite way. You, uh, you started long ago a career in the NBA, you are an established uh, NBA coach. Uh, what made you take this decision and come back you know, to Europe? Generally speaking, um, I disagree. I think that a lot of American coaches will come and would love to coach in EuroLeague. You have a lot of respect for EuroLeague, for, uh, for European basketball, and I know great European coaches who will go tomorrow to NBA if they have opportunity. You know, my case is a little bit uh, different. You know, I consider myself as entrepreneur, a pioneer. Uh, I was basketball Colombo because, you know, 20 years ago, the, it was very, very difficult to, to get to the American market, to get a job, and as a first non-American coach in an NBA. At that time, it was a miracle. Players, it was a little bit easier, and obviously, uh, great names, great basketball players, kind of little by little, helped coaches also to establish themselves. And today we have a lot of, lot of international flavors, a lot of international coaches all over the league. But 20 years ago, it was uh, the case was most, and, and the market was much different. Being educated uh, in Serbia and having worked in uh, the NBA for many, many years, uh, you can say that you are a fan of, you yeah, love this game or a field devotion? Both. I think it's all about the fans. You know, the reason why we play this game and the reason why we can afford to coach and to play the games are fans. Uh, it's all about the fans. You know, that, that's, that they make it, this uh, uh, thing happen. Um, obviously, players are number one. It's all about players because players are, uh, fans are coming to watch players. They're not coming to watch coaches. And that's something little by little things are going to change in European basketball too. From the marketing point of view, from the even conceptually point of view, that uh, that this game is about a player, it's not about a coaches. We still have a old way, old-fashioned uh, uh, way of thinking and, and advertising games through the more to the coaches than to the players. Basketball analysts say that you know the real basketball is played in uh, Euroleague, uh, and one proof of that is that Luka Doncic, who was uh, Superstar in the age of 17, 18, he was being he was voted MVP regular season final four. He came straight to the NBA at this young age and he became a superstar right away. Do you agree with this? Uh, a lot of co a lot of cases against and for it. You have a lottery picks who never played. You have a number one pick, number two pick, number lottery picks that international players that never had a chance to 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 even to establish themselves and they were retired after a couple of years. So Luka Doncic is extreme. Luka Doncic is right now in the top 10 most dominant players in the, in, in the world. And it's a scary just think, you know, how good he's going to be in the 10 years if he keeps developing this way. Speaking about uh, Luka, it's been a long time since I wanted to ask you this question. You cover, I covered the group in Helsinki in 2017 uh, in Eurobasket and also in Istanbul when you guys thrived and you won the gold medal. And uh, I'm sure that... Uh, when you were a coach in Phoenix, for sure you wanted him to be picked in the number one when you had uh, the number one in the draft. And, uh, you know, the question is, how is it possible that uh, guys in the U.S. Who, knows, who know basketball and scout basketball very well in Phoenix, in Sacramento with two Serbian great minds like Peja mm -hmm. and uh, Vlade, uh, didn't pick this great talent? I got a rhetorical question for you. Do you make decisions about your family, about your work? When you're getting ready for this interview, you're making decisions, right? So every decision takes a risk. So you're not 100%, I'm not 100% as a coach. Players are not 100%. Nobody shoots the ball 100%, right? So they have a makes and misses. Front office too. I mean, they're projecting, they're collecting information, they put them together. 
and there is no there is no guarantee. There is no guarantee. Nobody knew that Jokic was going to be this good. And we were laughing. I was laughing with the people from the, uh, Denver Nuggets when they were saying, when we drafted Jokic, we knew that he's going to be what he is today. And they're laughing because they didn't know. They didn't know. So the point is, you know, we can't we can just take a one one case. Obviously, Luca is who is, you know, who is he today. And, and it's a fun watching the kid, but everybody's making mistakes. I read uh, an interview recently of yours that you said that uh, if Dontis were, were picked in, uh, in Phoenix, I wouldn't be in Istanbul. Now you are, <laughs> you are in Istanbul and uh, you are taking care of the, the job in Fenerbahce. Uh, what's, which are your first impressions? You know? I'm happy where I am, you know, just I mean, one of the best uh, clubs in, uh, in, in the world. You know, we have a 30 million uh, fans foundation. It's just impressive and uh, I'm happy I'm in a good place. How do you see the basketball level of Euroleague so far, being, uh, having coached uh, four games uh, official in the Euroleague? Well, you know, just uh, Euroleague is not, a, not an enigma to me, you know, just I've been watching Euroleague all the time. Even, you know, my, my regular job was being an NBA and coaching and preparing my team and, and, and uh, on a daily basis being ready for NBA games. But in free time I was watching Euroleague. We have so many friends, so many. So you don't feel like uh, you're no, a I'm rookie not, coach? I'm not alien. I'm not alien <laughs> here. I feel very comfortable. I know. I know what's the deal, and I know the drill here. But uh, I would say that the big biggest win is the fact that we can play the games. Obviously, you know, I agree with uh, Jacob Radic with saying the biggest win would be having fans in the crowd. But just the fact that we have a chance to play basketball tomorrow, consider this uh, virus situation, is just a big win for all of us, and that we should be. Um, our approach of life and sports should change because we are all competitive, you know, uh, in Greece, in, in, in Turkey, in Serbia, and all over Europe. But understanding that this is, is something bigger than sports. Sport is a huge part of the community and it impacts a lot of people's lives. But it's kind of wake-up call for all of us, and, and especially for people in the sports, that we can send a message across the world. So new team, new players, new coach mentality. How difficult is to maintain the same status that Fenerbahce had the previous, the previous years? Your job is to be prepared. You know, my philosophy is you control your preparation. That's all you control. You know, there's a lot of stuff you don't control. We don't control virus. We don't control some stuff around the court. But I'm a kind of coach who loves his team. I love the pieces that we have. I'm, um, I'm happy with the group that we have. A uh, uh, couple of new faces, a couple of old faces. It's kind of a mix. Uh, good, great group of guys. And it's fun, you know, being around them and, and coach them. And our job is to uh, be prepared and to give our best to win the next game. Uh, we're thinking next, the most important game is next one. How about Panathinaikos? It was a team that uh, uh, was in contact with you several years ago. Yeah, a lot of respect for uh, for Greek basketball in general. Olympiakos, Panathinaikos, the world famous brands. You know, everybody in the world knows those brands, and uh, especially uh, marks that. Uh, I would say Jacob Radic, 13 years being in this organization and what this team accomplished in that era, it's really impressive. A lot of respect for Panathinaikos organization, for the team. I think they put a neat uh, roster together. I think it's a very, very uh, a balanced roster very well. A lot of athleticism, a lot of uh, power, a lot of size. And we know it's going to be a tough game tomorrow. Last question with uh, an NBA accent. Uh, which Euroleague team looks in your eyes, like uh, the Lakers, and which one like uh, the Miami Heat? Lakers. Lakers would be Real Madrid, probably, and Valencia would be Miami. Thanks a lot, coach. Thank you.